Hello everyone, and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This video, we'll be studying the Heck reaction, which is a palladium-catalyzed cross-coupling of alkenes to arenes or other alkenes. It was developed by Richard Heck at the University of Delaware right around early 1970s. As usual with these named reactions episodes, I will be first talking about the scope and mechanism of the reaction, then describing a few pros and cons, and finally looking at an example of the Heck reaction being used in the relatively recent chemical literature. If you'd like some review on the properties of alkenes, or if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe and take a look at the video at the top of the screen. So the Heck reaction is going to be first the reaction of this aryl or vinyl halide or pseudo halide. So I can draw this as Rx, where R is that aryl or vinyl group, and X is going to be something like bromine iodine, or a pseudohalide like triflate. And if you're not familiar with triflates, this is just a short name for trifluoromethane sulfonate. So we have this O3S and then a CF3 group. And this can act like a very good leaving group, just like a halide. And this is going to be reacting with some sort of electron deficient alkene. So I can put this R prime group on here. And a lot of time, this is going to be an electron withdrawing group like a carbonyl group. Reacting these together in the presence of a palladium zero catalyst and some base, I'll just denote the base as B, that's going to give us the cross-coupled product. So I can draw this alkene and it will have both the R and R prime groups arranged normally trans on this alkene. Remember we did have that base as well in the reaction, so we're going to end up with that conjugate acid of the base, so we'll have the BH plus and X minus, whatever that leaving group was. And there are a lot of options for the base to use. You can use some sort of carbonate like sodium or potassium carbonate, and oftentimes you can use organic bases like amines. Finally, this palladium zero catalyst, which is gonna be kind of the star of our show, will be generated from a variety of palladium precatalysts. So a lot of times you'll see palladium chloride, palladium acetate, or this tetrakis triphenylphosphine palladium zero catalyst. So now that we know what to expect from the Heck reaction, let's look at the mechanism. So this mechanism will be a little bit different from the normal arrow pushing mechanisms we might usually encounter in organic chemistry. So this mechanism will be a catalytic cycle centered around the role of palladium. We're going to start with our palladium zero catalyst here and we'll draw two ligands on this palladium. So I'll just denote those as L. I will also explicitly write the oxidation state of palladium here, so we'll write the little zero to denote palladium zero. Now the identity of these two ligands doesn't really matter that much for our mechanism, but they might be, for example, acetate, if we're using palladium acetate, or we might also be using, like I mentioned earlier, some sort of triphenylphosphine ligand. The first step in our cycle is going to be what's called the oxidative addition of the aryl or vinyl halide to this palladium zero catalyst. And for those of you who are used to drawing arrow pushing mechanisms for these types of reactions in organic chemistry, you may be disappointed to know that I'm going to be doing some hand waving throughout this video. And that is because as soon as we start incorporating transition metals into our organic reactions, the arrow pushing notation kind of falls apart to an extent. That said, after the oxidative addition, we get this palladium complex, where we have the two ligands still bonded to the palladium, and now we have the R group and the halide, the X group, also bonded to that palladium center, which we can see now is in the plus two oxidation state with those two additional bonds. Next, we can bring in our alkene here. So we have that R prime group on the alkene, and this time we actually can use some sort of an arrow notation. We can move the electrons in the pi bond of the alkene to attack the palladium center, and at the same time, this bond between palladium and the R group will come up to this carbon on the alkene. And this is our carbon-carbon bond forming step, so what we end up with is this intermediate, where we have the R and R prime groups bonded to these two carbons, and we still have this palladium 2 with the two ligands and the halide on this carbon. Next, we undergo a beta hydride elimination. So what's gonna happen is this palladium carbon bond here will swing up 
to pluck off the hydrogen on the adjacent carbon, and the CH bond will come down to reform the pi bond between these two R and R prime groups. So from this step, we get our desired product, the cross-coupled R and R prime compound. However, we're still not done with the catalytic cycle, so we end up with this palladium intermediate here, where we have again still the two ligands on the palladium, we still have the halide, and now remember we've just taken off that hydrogen, so we're going to have a hydrogen on the palladium as well. And here is where the role of the base comes in, and it's going to undergo a reductive elimination on this palladium intermediate, taking off that hydrogen, and the electrons in this bond will come to the palladium, kicking off the halide, and that's going to give us our conjugate base. So we have now this BH positive X minus salt. And this is going to be what regenerates the palladium catalyst for the next catalytic cycle. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Richard Heck was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2010 for his work with this reaction. And not specifically the Heck reaction, but also other reactions that use the same sort of palladium catalyzed cross coupling that we've seen here. And all these reactions follow generally the same sort of cycle that we've just drawn out. And these reactions include the Suzuki, Sonogashira, and Nagishi couplings, as well as several others. These reactions are all incredibly useful in the field of organic synthesis, and especially total synthesis, of complex natural products. Let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of the Heck reaction when it comes to using it synthetically. One of the pros that I alluded to earlier is that this reaction is usually stereoselective, so we can generally obtain the trans alkene rather than the cis alkene due to steric hindrance during the coupling reaction. It also has a fairly high functional group tolerance, which means that we don't have to be super worried about the palladium catalyst causing other side reactions to happen if we have a lot of other functional groups on our intermediate. Finally, the Heck reaction is very useful intramolecularly. So the stereo and regioselectivity of the reaction can be much improved when both our alkene and the aryl or vinyl halide are in the same molecule and we're performing some sort of ring closing reaction. The primary disadvantage of the Heck reaction is the use of the palladium catalyst. Although the palladium is catalytic, so we don't need large quantities of it, a lot of these catalysts and their ligands are very expensive and they're also not usually recovered after the reaction. So although we're only using the palladium in catalytic amounts, we are essentially throwing away what we do use after the reaction is completed if we don't find a way to recover it. The last thing I'd like to study is the use of the Heck reaction in the recent chemical literature. For this, we can look at the total synthesis of morphine, which was described by Gilbert Stork in 2009. Morphine, as you may know, is an extremely important painkiller and is closely related to other biologically active compounds like codeine and heroin. Near the beginning of the synthesis, Stork describes this aryl iodide with this enol ether substituent, and I've highlighted in blue our relevant functional groups, so that is the aryl iodide, as well as this alkene with this ethyl ester electron withdrawing substituent. Exposing this compound to palladium acetate with triphenylphosphine, so together, those two compounds are going to form our palladium zero ligand in situ. And in this case, we can use a base like sodium acetate. And these conditions are going to facilitate the Heck reaction in an intramolecular fashion, coupling that aryl iodide to the carbon atom on the alkene, forming this benzofuran system, which is subsequently converted to morphine in many steps. So I hope this video helped you understand the Heck reaction its catalytic mechanism, and some of its uses in synthesizing natural products. If you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe, and leave a comment with what types of reactions you'd like to see next. Visit my social media, and if you're willing and able, consider donating to my Patreon page, which helps me to continue creating all of this content for all of you. Thanks for watching.